the weekend. This is Bazaar Morning Call. Broadcasting live from the CNBC TV 18 Motilal Oswal Studios in Mumbai. Good morning. You're with us here on a fresh new edition of Bazaar Morning Call. We are coming out of a midweek holiday. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's a holiday shortened week. It's a very holiday shortened week. But that doesn't, of course, stop markets from doing what they do. We're coming to you from the CNBC TV 18 Motorola Rose Park Studios. I'm Prashant with me, my colleague Sonia and Nigel. Guys, hi, morning. Hi, morning. You morning. said the word holiday thrice. I think you really enjoyed it <laughs> yesterday. Not quite enough, Sonia. <laughs> I think looking for one more. And there is one more coming. There is one more coming. So. Just pull through two, two days and yeah. then <laughs> back in the dressing room. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Well, uh, things are looking a little muddy once again because I think we're back to answering, trying to answer and figure out that old question. Uh, is bad news bad news or is bad news good news? Uh, and the answer changes uh, sometimes. What I mean by bad news is data. So is bad data uh, good news, which is the fact that, uh, you know, as data comes in weaker, uh, rate hikes will slow down or bad data means the recession is uh, on the horizon. I think the markets latched on to the latter. These are two day changes for US markets. The Nasdaq is down three quarters of a percent. We will react to two days worth of changes. Remember, the 10-year U.S. yield is down 13 and a half basis points. I mean, you know, it's a slippery slope and we've seen a very sharp correction. The dollar index is down a full, almost a full 1%. These are large changes which are becoming, not so much for the equity market. The S&P, by, by the way, uh, is down about a, th a quarter percent or so. The tech index uh, lost a little bit more. Now let's come to uh, what really happened. So markets, especially as you could see uh, overnight, are starting to reflect growth concerns. Uh, and, you know, so we got, we got two data points last night. We had the uh, job openings data and the factory orders, both which slowed down. Guess what the initial market reaction was? Markets rallied. Markets did well. Indices were higher. And later in the session, they all started correcting and ended at the, almost at the low point of the day. Uh, and this is the reason I'm saying that, you know, the realization starts to set in while, yes, I mean, you know, slower data means maybe, you know, the Fed is done or maybe close to being done. But it also means that inevitably growth will slow down and that's the price to pay uh, for inflation to come under control. It's not unanticipated, but the fact that it's starting to finally come through in data, I think, is important. Uh, gold is uh, the, the sort of risk uh, uh, proxy, the opposite of uh, risk, right? And that's jumped above the $2,000 an ounce. It's, uh, it was up about 2.5%. We'll talk more about this uh, in a little bit. Uh, the next data points this week, which will kind of reinforce this uh, sort of weaker data, or maybe you know they will be counter to what we've seen so far, is the ISM services number, which is later tonight. Uh, this is equally important. Remember, on Monday uh, in the US, we had the ISM manufacturing uh, data, which disappointed, which was weaker. So services inflation is the bigger problem, as many have pointed out. And I think we'll get the answer today. And the jobs data on Friday will be the next big one. For, from a Fed perspective, that is one of the top, uh, most important data points that they watch out for. Now, let's come to the market here. So uh, the SGX is up on your screen. And I think compared to uh, the close on Monday, it is indicating a higher start. Uh, although I think on a day-on-day -day basis, the SGX is uh, 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 lower by about a third of a percent. But you've got to compare this to uh, Monday's close. Uh, which uh, and then you, you'd have a, a 30 40 or point higher kind of start uh, on the SGX. Now on Monday, the Nifty got to the 40 day exponential moving average. This is a level we put out on Friday and on Monday as well, which was 17,406 and then sold off. I mean, the, uh, at Monday's close, the number is 17,406. So we got to it and we have we are just under it. So that's the first level to uh, cross on the upside. The next level is a uh, is a is a is a uh, the 50-day moving average. The 17,542 is the 50-day moving average, which is, again, very close by, another 40, 50 points, and, you know, the index will do it. Bank Nifty has tested the lower end uh, of the March 10th gap area. The gap area, basically, the lower end is 48,39. The higher end is uh, 41,208. On the 10th of March, between the 10th and 11th of March, we had a very big runaway gap. And uh, we are at the lower end of the gap area as of, as of Monday's close. So the upper end becomes the next kind of uh, level to take out, which is uh, 41,208. On the downside for the Bank Nifty, the 40-day exponential moving average at 40,466 uh, should not be violated, should be supported. These are simple kind of levels to watch if you're trading 
uh, in the very near term. Uh, mind you, uh, this is a holiday shortened week. There is still one more holiday, although you've got two trading sessions. There is the RBF policy meet tomorrow. So, you know, it's likely to be choppy. It's, not, it's very unlikely to be a one-way kind of a market, especially also given the fact that global markets are looking a little confused about which way to read the data uh, going forward. Sonia. Oh, absolutely. And you know, uh, give and take everything, uh, today is going to be a good day, right? The start is going to be in the green yeah. as per what the SGX adjusted is suggesting. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I think the Nifty Futures close was 17,474 on Monday and the SGX Nifty is now at 17,500 plus. So, looks like it's going to be a good opening for sure. Uh, but there are mixed cues, of course. I mean, the U.S. markets ended their four-day winning streak yesterday. The Dow was down about 200 points, and there are definitely signs of a slowdown in the labor market. So that market has come off a tad bit. But for our own markets, there are more pros than cons, more pluses than minuses. So I'm going with, you know, green today, because one, the FIs continue to buy in the market, albeit a small amount, because, you know, volumes are on the thinner side, given that it's a truncated week. The Nifty has been holding above that 17,350 mark. And the next level to watch on the upside is uh, the 200-day moving average of 17,490. So I'm going to watch that very closely. Apart from that, you know, as uh, Prashant was pointing out, tomorrow is the RBI policy. The expectation is of a 25 basis points rate hike and perhaps a continuation of the stance, which is a withdrawal of accommodation. But for me, the biggest positive cue this morning is the updates that have come in from the financial sector. Uh, whether it was HDFC Bank, Bajaj Finance, m and Finance or even uh, Bandhan Bank, even AU Small Finance Bank, most companies have reported a steady growth this time around. In fact, uh, CLSA has gone ahead and upgraded Bajaj Finance as well. We'll talk about that in greater detail. But robust growth, you know, deposit growth for HDFC Bank was in excess of 20%. Bajaj Finance new loan growth was 20%. m and Finance as well saw both disbursement and loan growth, which was very strong. So, you know, that's one pocket that could do well. Yeah. and the lead from the front for the bulls. So I'm going with green today. All right. Uh, you know, Sonia, and it was a good session actually on Monday. Yeah. The Nifty ended higher and it came to life in the final hour of trade actually. That was because the Nifty Financial Services Index, normally the expiry plays out on Tuesday. This time around Tuesday was a holiday, so that's why it did play out uh, on Monday itself. And that was an outperformer, particularly in the last 60 minutes. So it ended higher. And the breadth of the market was good. We pointed this out on Monday morning itself. In the month of April, historically, the broader markets tend to outperform what the Nifty does because fresh allocations come into play. How is trade set up? Well, it was a good start, as we said, to the fiscal year. This firm resistance, though, for the Nifty in that vicinity of around 17,500 to around 17,550 expects some consolidation ahead of the crucial RBI meet. Well, what did we see in uh, Monday's trading session? There was about a short covering that played out. Both the Nifty, the Nifty Bank ended higher, and you did have open interest that was lower. But it wasn't the FIs that are covering their shots. Well, they, in fact, added short positions. Close to 8,000 short contracts is what they added. The short positioning continues to remain elevated at around 88% odd. But what's telling you that at higher level, you're likely to see some selling is the call writing. And they wrote more than 20,000 call contracts. Pulling up the options picture then, for the market on the whole, there is still writing being seen at around 17,400 as well as 17,300. Just take a look at that. 17,350, uh, you know, the premiums around 50 rupees odd. So you deduct it from there. And then you get that support zone of around 17,300 odd mark. Remember, I'm not going down to around the 20 DMA, which is closer to around 17,200. The first support zone comes in at around 17,300, while on the upside, uh, you know, the 20 and the 50 DMA, uh, they become a bit of, uh, the 50 and the 200 DMA become a bit of a resistance zone. On the Nifty Bank itself, you'll want it to defend, you know, that 40,500, 40,700, and you have the 50 DMA as well up for you on the screen. So the SJX Nifty, you adjust it and you compare it with the Nifty Futures, we're likely to see a 30-point uptick. Sustaining holding on to that will be important. And we have a broad range, 17,300 on the downside, 17,500 on the upside. Let's see how this goes. All right, uh, well, let's uh, tell our viewers. By the way, before we start, Sorry. Prashant and uh, Naicha, I don't know if you guys noticed, but you know, there's uh, on the Twitter website, did you notice the, the, the Dogecoin uh, sign? <laughs> no, I'm not. not uh, you are, you are. <laughs> Prashant, I'm sure you have. <laughs> it's interesting, right? Elon Musk does so many things to stay relevant and stay mm. in the news. I just, I just have one question. What does it mean? <laughs> <laughs> Only he can answer that. But uh, I mean, it's been going viral, so I thought, you know, I'll just speak about it. It's, a, it's, a, it's a doge, right? It's, yeah. it's, not, it's, a, it's a dog, but it's a doge. The dogecoin uh, You know, we, symbol, have a, right? we have a little shih tzu at home, and uh, <laughs> my, my son insists on calling him the doge. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's interesting what's happening with uh, oh, yeah, Twitter, yeah. of course. Always. Uh, never boring with uh, Elon Musk.
Well, let's quickly tell you what uh, we have uh, lined up here over the first uh, 30 minutes of the show. We'll get you updates from markets across the globe. Gary Schlossberg, Wells Fargo Inst Investment Institute, will join us to discuss the global trade setup. Later, our research team will bring you uh, CNBC TV 18's list of top 10 stocks for the day. At about 8.30 this morning, we do a fundamental stock analysis with Devin Choksi of KR Shoghi Securities. All right. Uh, well, you know, we have a lot of uh, market veterans talking about a buy on India. And here's one of them. Uh, Venugopal Gare of Bernstein says that as we head into the second quarter of the calendar year, he expects the Indian equity markets to see a quick rebound in the near term after six months of an underperformance to emerging markets. He says even in a bearish global setting, he always sees room for rallies led by various factors. His call for a rebound is premised on a confluence of tactical factors including valuations and a bunch of macro factors. Venugopal says financials, real estate and cement are best for this rebound while staples and utilities will underperform. Well, Amish Shah of Bank of America expects the Nifty to correct, uh, or rather time correct, registering a flat year and underperforming the EM uh, basket. He believes sector skew will be important for any alpha generation. He continues to be underweight on sectors with high earnings risks and expensive valuations and prefers investment themes over consumption. Amish says uh, BOFA remains overweight financials, industrials, metals, cement, autos, utilities and uh, healthcare. Uh, and they're neutral on energy as a sector. They're underweight on IT, communication services, staples, and discretionary. Uh, Amish says with uh, tightening liquidity, they expect large caps to outperform small and mid caps. All right, important to take note of what's happening in the money markets as well because the rupee is now at almost 80 to 50 to the dollar. So let's get you some money market views for today. Kunal Sudhani of Shinhan Bank says US job openings in February fell to the lowest levels in nearly two years. And there was a continued decline in factory orders, pushing yields and dollar index lower, while gold was higher. He says a one-year-old ascending support line around 101.3 appears as a key support for the dollar index. For the dollar INR pair, Kunal says 81.80 acts as a support, while 82.45 is a resistance. On bonds, Neeraj Gambhir of Axis Bank says the market witnessed year in buying by insurance and mutual funds before they lose indexation benefits in the new year, while traders were seen selling ahead of the borrowing calendar. Uh, he says the market traded range-bound as borrowing calendar came in line with market expectations. For the rest of the week, he says market will take cues from RBI, MPC and US non-farm payroll data. He expects the RBI to deliver a 25 basis point rate hike and the 10-year benchmark bond yield to trade in a range of between 7.25 and 7.4%. Okay, lots to talk about and lots of calls coming in on India in terms of a positive view, a buy on dip. So it's an interesting morning of trade. We'll slip into a quick break. On the other side, our entire research team will be joining in to help us with a list of top 10 stocks. Stay tuned.